Mick, I've had a revelation. I've been here before. Hey everyone, welcome to That Pedal Show, Dan here. Mick here, hello. What strings you use, mate? <laughs> <laughs> that was spectacular, Daniel. Thank you, I, thank I, you. Before we introduce yourself, I've got one question. Is the um, horsey thing there... The Mustang. ...after the reverb? No. Because you have getting that like... Is that just a pre-delay? It's a pre-delay. Also, where I've moved a couple of things. We'll get there. Yeah, we'll get there. We'll, we'll get, get there. there. Okay. So, um, I've had a bit of a revelation that I wanted to share. As a lot of you will know, Mick and I love two amp rigs. And we love the way that you can uh, blend these sounds of these amps together and they end up being more than the sum of their parts. It's a really inspirational way to find your own sound. And we've been doing it for years. Um, and I, I love doing it, but I've had a bit of a, an epiphany. I mean, that, that, it sounds, I sincerely hope that the audio can at least do some justice to what's hitting my ears anyway. Right. It sounds absolutely, well, massive. Yeah. Bassy, trebly, middly, like everything's, everything's there. Everything's there. Fidelity. Yeah. Harmonics. I can hear the... I can hear the fizz on the treble boot, or at least on the overdrive, yep. and I don't hate it. Right. I can hear the bass in in all the sounds, and it's not overwhelming. It's just like, wow, this is this is really spectacular. Awesome. As we would hope, right, Daniel? Well, of, well of, of as, your, yeah, yeah. So this is your personal rig. This is this is I'm, I'm putting this together now. Yes, it's all coming together as my new personal rig. For what purpose? Well, TPS band, I mm -hmm. uh, got a, a new band with um, some of the members of Tin Spirits and Paul Stacey. Uh, so I've been really inspired. Have you got a band name yet? We don't. It, we think we might have. The new originals. The new, the new originals. And then you had to go back to the old originals and just the originals. <laughs> <laughs> um, we think we might have. We think we might have, but we'll, okay. we're not sure. But right. anyway, enough, anyway. Enough of that. Uh, yeah, we had our first rehearsal and... I was telling you that I turned up with the amps and stuff 
and I've been so used to just playing in the room for so long. It's been so long since I've done a gig. In this room? Well, not just in this room, but in, in, in the room at home, yep. you know. And then I turn up and it's like drummer's going, bass player's going, Paul's going. I'm like, oh, right, I remember this and some things going to need adjusting. Anyway, I was at home trying out some of the, the amplifiers and I... Plugged in my Lazy J, which is the amp that I used for years and years and years. Lazy J20. Lots of regular viewers of the show. We used to use it quite a lot in the early days, haven't used it so much recently. And lots of you out there are saying, please, 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 can we hear more of the J? But so you you using this amp all the time. It's always I was, there. I was using this amp all the time, but I've, something happened. And now I'm using it in a way that I've never used it before. That's a duh. So I was at home in my little room and I plugged it in and I turned the reverb up and thought that sounds wonderful but it was loud and now the amp's got a built-in attenuator so I turned the attenuator all the way down and then I cranked the input just to see what would happen I thought it would you know because I never have run the amp past three really to a lot of you watching you'll think why haven't you done that that's insane you know the the amp has that feature that's what it's there for why haven't you done that but you're not a fan of that approach are you well i i, I wasn't um because i've always played in loud when with that amplifier it's always been at gigs it's always been loud volumes and whenever i've turned the attenuated one i just lost all my headroom yeah. Now, I needed the headroom in that amplifier because that was paired with the AC30. Right. The AC30 was, you know, as, as wonderful as it is, it was sort of, it was turned up and, you know, grinding, and I was really needing the headroom from that. Anyway, I turned it up with the attenuator. Now, I've got the, because we're in here a little bit louder, um, I've got the attenuator on halfway on the Lazy J, and I've got the volume up just past 2 o'clock shall yep. we say, right? Yep. And where all things sound best. And I've got the reverb on the app turned up. So this is just the guitar into the Lazy J. We, we do have a flying beast in here with apologies. So if you see it, you know, that's it, it just is in here. I don't really want to kill it. That's where we are. OK, uh, we'll, we'll usher it out. It's, it's just here for the tone. Exactly it's, it's that. Just here for the yeah. tone fly. It's like, that sounds great, mate. <laughs> You need a bit more bass on that one. Yeah. Uh, Hang on, I'm just going to do a small line of poos all the way along the top. Um, okay, so this is just the guitar into the Lazy J. <laughs> Pretty serious. I just love the way that all the mids are there and but the bottom and top is there as well. Yeah. It doesn't like for me the tweed sound typically can be a little bit in a place that I would prefer it somewhere else. That is just spectacular. We're gonna get Jesse in to do a show on tweeds because it's a whole really interesting story and yeah. he understands those amps better than anyone. Oh man, that's really lovely. It just suits that guitar it, it does. and you. So Perfectly. So I think what happened was because it's because of this guitar. Red's different yeah. like this, right? But, but because I've, I'm at home with this guitar, I'm playing this guitar all the time because I just love it so much. And plugging into the amp set like this is like, wow. Yeah. It just, you know, something happened. Anyway, if I now turn on just the matchless, all right, and we'll hear the matchless on its own.
Yeah. Very dry. Um, you know, there's a lot more headroom in that than the Lazy J. It's not given up in the same way, is it? No. It's like... It's not... Obviously, it's not pristine. If I dig in, it will break up. Yeah. And that's that's part of this conversation. Because So what I found was... We talk about dynamics and headroom and limiting. I'm limiting the Lazy J, but I'm also just limiting the matches so that when I dig in, it will break up. I don't want it to have impossibly forever headroom. Um, so this is the... So just yeah. so we get a base to work from... There's this, a t-shirt. <laughs> impossibly forever headroom. <laughs> I've, when I'm in that thing, I'm playing my... my the, the language part of my brain just turns off and goes somewhere else. As the, I'm sure you've noticed that over the years. There is, a, there is a cognitive psychological explanation for that as it goes. Right. I'm just crazy. <clears throat> no. Okay. So anyway, this is the sound of both amps on together, okay? Now I heard that and just went, wow. It's massive. If you're wondering why I look a bit weird, I've been choking on a small piece of almond from a popular chocolate bar. <laughs> okay, it wasn't the fly. And coughing loudly while uh, Dan was playing there. I shall uh, see if I can wash it down with some of this tasty beverage. So we've got our two amps, right? Sounds, it, it sounds, I was as we were setting up the um, levels and stuff to record today I was just stood at the back of the studio there going oh my god that just sounds it's like everything I just said about the J being it's like uh, it's everything right so what I'm trying to do with the J is the center of that sound yeah and what I'm trying to do is everything around it is basically supporting what's going on in the J the issue comes with a setup, a, an approach like this, the J is limiting. Yeah. Right? So I'm assuming you've got the matchless wet for your wet, dry stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so an obvious problem, you know, when you've got one amp limiting and, and one amp not, I'll put some delay and then we'll hear it in both amplifiers. Um, so in this sound, where I've got no split, this, it's just... Both all effects are going to both amplifiers. Okay. Okay. So all if, effects, both amplifiers. Yeah. So here is the the J. And this is the delay going into the J. Same delay going into the matchless. Do us a favor, just give us a back to back of a, a, a skank. Now, because the J is limiting, the delay is louder in the J. So one and, thing and more distorted and more distorted, right? Yeah. And, and and it just if I play with the delay on the J like that, it's, I mean, it sounds great to me, it, but well, yeah, it yeah, is yeah, messy. You know, yeah. Well, it, it 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 could be a sound, but if I, what I want is a delay just to give me a bit of atmosphere, yeah. that doesn't work. Okay, all right. So one thing that you and I have done loads is that we split the guitar signal after our overdrive pedals and only send the delay into one amplifier. So if I do that, if I go from delay into both amplifiers, and then I'm going to split it, and I'm just going to send the delay into the matchless. Okay. Okay.
So with that sound, if I take the matchless out, it's just the J on its on its own. Yeah, there's so much more definition in the delayed sound when you've got it through the cleaner amp. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So we know this, right? We've done this loads before. Yeah, it's what it's what Dan and I refer to as wet dry. Uh, which the internet gets really annoyed about because it's technically dual mono. So uh, don't get hung up on the words. They're just, you know, meanings ascribed to things. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah, still wet dry. TPS wet dry. <laughs> uh, so this is something that we're both familiar with, right? Yeah. But what we've always done is we've always split the guitar signal after the overdrives. Okay. Right? Because... We've had both amplifiers. They've had a, a, a semblance of headroom. Yep. Um, so we've had all the, all, all the overdrives going to both amplifiers. Then we'd split it and just the delays and reverbs would go to our wet amplifier. Because the advice has always been, if you've ever asked, you know, in a comments and questions se session on a Monday or indeed in the regular video comments, you know, what two amps should I pair if I'm doing wet dry? The answer is always, doesn't really matter. Just pick two amps that are of similar gain and headroom characteristics. Those would be our normal advices, right? Yeah, right. But we're sort of stepping away from that now. Yep. We're saying one of our amplifiers is actually really limiting, yep. sounding amazing. The other one's got much more headroom. So I did that first of all, I, and, and so I split it after the overdrives. And uh, and into the match list, so I'm going to turn the page on. Yep. And it's a beautiful valve overdrive. So. I'm going to turn the matchless on. Seriously, man. <laughs> it's a grown up guitar sound, that, isn't it? It's really wonderful. <laughs> it's really wonderful. Here's the problem, though. Yeah. Um, same sound going into the Lazy J. So without it, and then with it on. It's too much. So much really. It's just too much. <laughs> yeah. But that, that, I don't, what happens then, that beautiful, lovely gain sound that I've got in the matchless, and I get this angry barking sound out of the Daisy J. Mushy. Mushy. Yeah, mush yeah. too mushy. Mush, mush too much. <laughs> A touch too mush. <laughs> um, I thought, okay, how, how can we sort this? What I'll, what I'll do is I'll split the signal before the overdrive. So, so only one amp is seeing the so overdrive. So only one amplifier. And the J is just doing its thing. And the J is just going to do its thing. So if I split after, yep. uh, after the overdrives, and then I hear the. Actually, I'll, I'll play. Yep. I'll play with with the, the overdrive going into both amplifiers. Yep. And then I'm going to split it, the signal before the page. Yep. So the, the J is just his guitar signal and the page is just going to the matchless. We'll okay? put the diagram up. I rather suspect in your headphones, many of you will prefer the sound of the overdrive hitting both amps because it's more overdriven, it's fatter, it is ostensibly bigger. Right. But the problem with that is the first amp has got, it's so maxed out, it's already limiting, it's got nowhere to go, and all of my dynamics are gone. 
And in a band mix, that means everything's gone. Yeah, it's all mush. Yeah, yeah. And I can hear just sat here, there's so much more clarity in the second version where the overdrive is only hitting one of the amps. The J's doing his thing. It's really happy. It's a really nice place where you like it. Yeah. But the matchless has got the headroom to take that extra overdrive and therefore retains the clarity. Yeah. Whereas the J just caves in, which is a cool thing if that's what you want. Absolutely. And, and you know, being able to do that's really cool. But I... I don't like the sound of the page hitting the J. It's yeah. it's just, it doesn't work. The J, you know, for, for most of the stuff, the J on its own, and just having all the other sounds supporting that, it mm. just works so well. So, you know, something I've, you know, never really done before, splitting that guitar signal and just having certain drive pedals go to the, the app with the headroom. Now, yeah. what, that, what that allows me to do, um, one thing that I've always loved treble boosters, right? Um, so if I go back to uh, just both amplifiers on, actually I'll turn, what I'll do, I'm gonna put the treble booster into the J20, right? So the guitar's just gonna go treble booster yep. into J20, yep, right? Yep. Have a listen to that. It's so cool. It's such a great sound, right? But if I do the same thing into the matchless, yeah. you get this. That's a poke in the eye. It's too much. It's too much. Because there's, there's too much. Too it's much. too much. <laughs> because again, we've got, we've got, a lot of headroom to work with there, yeah. right? So then what I thought, okay, what if I have the guitar go through the troll booster, then split after the troll booster, one side's gonna go directly to the Lazy J, then one side's gonna go into the page, right? into the matchless. So you can send different overdrive pedals to different amps. But yeah, but the, the yeah, but it's that idea is what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm gonna use the limiting of the page. Yeah. I'm gonna send the troll booster into that. Yeah. Instead of instead of hitting it directly into the matchless. Yeah. Right. So I'm just a just a quick one with that. So what I'll do now is I'll split the, the drive section. <laughs> So I've got strong Brian May vibes coming on. Yeah, totally. Well, Just that you know, honky. Match, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the reason when you went to the uh, troll booster into the page into both amplifiers, because the troll booster was hitting the page first. Yeah. But there's a big difference between the troll booster just hitting the laser yes. J. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it just, yeah, so this has just been a real revelation for me that, you know, I love having my reverbs and delays and stuff just going to the wet amplifier, but natural fact, if my core tone is that J20 turned up to a sweet spot, yeah. right, and then just having the other amplifier, being able to support it, it's magic. Yeah, so in essence, it's almost like a rewind, isn't it, through classic guitar tone to the point where I really love the sound of this amp and what it's doing, 
And what I don't want to do is stuff loads of overdrive pedals into it. That's it. I want to keep that, but I want it to be bolstered by all this other stuff that's happening over there. Absolutely. Which is, in a way, closer to the truer wet definition of wet-dry, isn't it? Yeah. In a way. Yeah, but... I mean, I think so. You know, and that way, it's like, um, the reverb's a really good example. Uh, you know, I've got that beautiful spring reverb happening in the, in the J20. Yeah. Um, but if I... Are you not using your CXM in stereo, Dan? No. I'm using, <gasps> no, but check this out. Short coil. No, check this out, because what I end up with is spring reverb on one side yeah. and the CXM on the other. <laughs> so if I'm going... <laughs> Can I add some vibrato on top of that just to the wet amplifier? So if I have my reverb going into both amplifiers, it sounds like this. But if I just have the reverb going into the matchless and leaving the spring reverb alone with the Lazy J, Mega. It's mega. Right, and just to finish that off, I'm going to add some vibrato on, you know, on top of that. It's colossal. It's the next stage in gain staging. You know what I mean? We've up till now we've been using the two amplifiers of you know not really stepping outside, you know, yeah. That you know that they've been comparable as far as headroom is concerned. Yeah. But this is different. I'm basically using the, the J yeah. cranked. Which will be nothing new to some of you because that's no, how of some of you've been doing it all along. Yeah. Um, but yeah, wow. It really it really really does sound colossal. I wanna hear I wanna hear you play some of those sounds. Oh, God. Alright. Um I'll have a quick go then before because we're gonna change the amps in a minute, right? We are indeed. And why are we doing that? Um because this is quite loud. Yeah. So I just we wanted to show the, the effect of doing it at a at a different volume. Yes. Because you're reliant on the J to be a certain volume. Indeed. Indeed. And if you attenuate it anymore, you don't like the sound as much. Indeed. Exactly that. Yeah, there we go.
Omega. Isn't that lovely? It's so much more um, high-end than I'm used to. Right. Which makes those positions two and four on the strap just, you just want to be not flur. Right. And it's really, yeah, really, really, really cool. Excellent. Amazing, right. thank you. Well, let's, let's um, so what we're going to do, we're going to turn the mashless off. Yep. Now we're going to use the Lazy J as the amp with the headroom and use the Princeton as the amp that's So give limiting. me a blast and I want to know where we are um, on the dB meter. Just, just play quiet to loud and I want to see what our range is. Okay. Okay. So, it's certainly, you know, it's very comfortable. Yeah, we'll say measured on our dB meter, and we don't know how it's set or how accurate it is, but it's a, it's a constant from week to week. So measured on our dB meter yeah. over there, 100, 101. If we're playing loud and we've got a Marshall and something else, we might go 106, 107 okay. is the highest we get in here. Right. But commonly it's 102, 103, 104. Okay. So it's, that's actually more palatable than we normally are. Yeah, totally. Okay, so let's go down from there and see how much you can feel it with a with a, with less volume because we we do like it loud. We do, we do. Okay, <laughs> we're back in the room. Okay, so we're swapping things now. We've now got the Princeton being the crank amp. Matchless is gone. Matchless is gone out of the picture. Princeton's doing the job that the J was doing exactly, and the J is now our headroomy amplifier. Yes. Okay, so Princeton sounds like this. And the J sounds like this. Tell you what's really interesting straight off the bat, mm -hmm. the basic EQ curve is much more similar. Yeah, 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 right. Uh, well, not much more similar. The mids are in a very similar place. Sure. Yeah. So, I mean, that itself, it may Could be pose problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, also, now that I've turned the J down, the top end is in a different spot as well. So, you know, with those old 5e3 circuits, the gain and the EQ is all really interactive. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more right in the top end. That's better. Okay, and both amps on together. Same volume? We're louder than we were before. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Well, there you go. So this isn't working at all. Well, but it's amazing, right? A, how these little amplifiers. So you know, the mattress is a mattress 30 watts, which is really loud. The Princeton is what? 12. 12? All I would say about that is the mattress is turned right down and the Princeton is on eight. Yeah, sure. So come on, let's hear it then.
I wonder how, I mean, would we have to go to like a one watt or a five watt amp or something to... What, uh, do you know what impedance the speaker in the Princeton is? I've got no idea. Daniel, I have a plan. <laughs> okay, here's the plan. It involves, we'll do this quickly. It involves this device over here. Ah, yeah, come on. An eight ohm attenuator. Come on. So we're just gonna, for those of you confused, we can't turn the Princeton down. Cause, Cause that's the sound. It sounds great on eight. Yeah. It's a non-master volume amp. Exactly. So I'm gonna use this uh, passive device to attenuate it so that we can crank it. And we're gonna see if we can just get that dB meter down to 90 or so. Yeah. And see if you can still love it. So while Mick's doing that, one of the really important things about the sound of the amps cranked and why using an attenuator as opposed to a master volume, it's the sound of those power valves. They are working really hard and they clip in a different way to, that, to just you know having preamp gain. And in the part of the sound of rock and roll is the amps turned up and everything working really hard. So the great thing the attenuator does is it lets the power valves work hard. Um, and we get closer. You know, it, it is different because the speaker isn't working as hard, um, but we do get the, the, the limiting from those power valves working really hard. Okay, okay. Uh, if, you, if you play and I shall turn the attenuator on and okay. we'll see what it does. Sad face? No, happy face. Sad really? face because all of a sudden all the, the big lovely stuff that we've had is, is gone. However, if we go to the first one that wasn't completely destroyed. Yeah. Just for your information, it is now at 35% okay. uh, of its output power. Okay. So we'll go from we'll go from 35 to 50 to 70, and you can hear that, okay? Okay, yep, yep. Right back up to full at the end. Right. Let's go to 50. Yep. Great. Okay. Okay. I will, I may make some adjustments over there in a second. So here is the J. Our attenuated Princeton.
How are you feeling about that? Yeah, not awesome. <laughs> not awesome. What I'm noticing now is that the headroom differences between the amps are massive now. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the Princeton has gone too mushy, mushy. And there's too much headroom in the... In yeah. The, yeah, right. Shall I clean up the Princeton a bit, see what happens? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go on then. <laughs> Your final chord, Daniel, you hit 90 dB. Okay, well, that's a massive reduction. Yeah, I mean, it's a colossal reduction, especially given the positioning of the thing. Okay, what have we learned then? Well, <laughs> if, if, you, if this is the approach you're going to take, it takes a, a while to get it set up in that sweet spot. But once yeah. you get there, man, it's just so worth it. It's, it's, a, it's a really beautiful experience. Um, hearing those two amplifiers working together, hearing the different limiting of the amplifiers yeah it's really magic i'm so taken with this i'm i'm now basing everything i do off setting the amps like this having one amp cooking having the j cooking and as you heard open. with the princeton there once we added the attenuator the amp needed quite a significant tweaking to get it back to that sort of sweet spot of overdrive where you like it and yeah. that's all about gain staging and it's all about just feeling the amp where you like it but i think the takeaway for me is You've got that big amp sound mm -hmm. and it sounds great. When you turn it down, it does get much less lovable. Right. And that's just the reality for most of us most of the time now. But you can actually hit a lower volume sound and have it massive. Yeah. If you go the wet, dry, dual mono, call it whatever you want, route, and it doesn't stop you getting a huge sound at a, a very palatable volume. I mean, yeah. there may be people that say, oh, I can't play at 90. Again, don't figure too much on the numbers that the, the specific numbers just know that we took uh, you know a, a significant amount of volume out of it yeah and it's not at all loud no where we ended up so before we did the tweaking at the end i was like this isn't working at all can't do it a little bit of tweaking a bit more bottom end back in the in the, in the j yeah and it's like oh and we're here and i think that's the thing when you're dealing with amplifiers that are limiting a little bit of tweaking will go a long, long way. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm, you know, I'm, really I'm cool. completely taken with this. I'm interested to see where this goes. Yeah, yeah, me too. There we go. Hope you enjoyed that. Thank you so much for watching. Again, please subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. A massive thank you to anyone that's gone to thatpedalshowstore.com and grabbed uh, T-shirts and pedals and hats and mugs and there's some new merch in the store. As now, we go yeah. There is. Indeed. Just in time for that seasonable period. Yes. Um, <laughs> a massive thank you to our patrons on Patreon, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Also to our preferred retailers in the UK and Europe. Anderson's Music of Guildford in Surrey Shire. Indeed. And in Australia. Would be Pedal Empire of Brisbane, Queensland Shire. And there are links in the description below Shire. Yes, have a read of the description. There's more information in there. And if you click on the links, buy stuff from Sweetwater in the US, Dan and I get a kickback off that and it helps us fund this show for which we are eternally grateful. Fabulous. Have a great day and uh, we'll see you on Monday for VCQ. Okay. Cheers, everyone. Bye. Cheerio.